They actually freaking did it, Dave. The Leafs went around and are heading to round number two. Let's recap game six in the series as a whole and take a peek at what's awaiting the Leafs in round two. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the May 1st edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. If you're an everydayer who listens to the podcast, you know this already, but if you're new to the show or a first-timer, Locked on Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free. Wherever you get your podcasts from, you can now catch us up on video as well, up on YouTube as Locked on Leafs. Hit subscribe. We've got new content coming out each and every weekday, Monday through Friday. But Dave, this episode on today's Monday show is different than any other pal, because we get to say the words that we have not been able to say in 19 years. The Leafs won a round. How does it feel, buddy? Hey, I'm not going to lie. It took a little bit of time to get used to it uh, the day after. And just, I'm sure a lot of people thought the same way, waking up and being like, so what now? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> did that actually happen? Did I did I dream that or did I what what the, that happened really? I, I, how do I react? What do I do with my hands? Well, what no, do I do no, with my hands? No golf jokes. No choking in the first round jokes. It's like it, it, it felt weird. It felt in a I mean obviously in a good way, but it's just like this is not supposed to happen. This is never supposed like, it never happens like this. You know why? It's because for years and years and years, the Leafs had the bounce go against them. Yep. And the Leafs finally had the bounce go their way. And it happened to be in a game six overtime with them leading the series three to two. And they get that bounce, you know, like, I mean, Tavares is sh- shot. It's not like it was a beautiful play. You know, it's a shot. He just kind of puts on net and it goes off the skate of Darren Radich and just, slowly trickles into the back of the net and you know you you look at uh you look at Vasilevsky just watching the puck go past him and into the back of the net it goes like it it, it really was just amazing to see the Leafs finally get that good bounce finally get the monkey off their back I mean you saw the elation in everybody's face like Sheldon Keefe damn near tore his ACL jumping jumping off the bench dude like you see that video where he jumps literally probably six feet high in the air and like lands and almost falls down off the bench and like the the emotion that was being shared between all the players jumping out onto the ice and up in the press box with the you know the scratched players and you know you look at what Dubis and and Spezza and Brandon Pridham like all of them just it really shows how much pressure there really was on everybody to make sure that this year they they actually won around because there was god the the pressure the relief of pressure in that moment you could see on every single one in that in that freaking organization like i don't know if you read chris johnson's piece in uh in the star today or on north north star bets but he was talking about some of the behind the scenes things. Like there were people in that organization who've been there for a long time, not mm-hmm. the people, you know, in front, but like the behind the scenes trainers, athletic coaches, you know, all that who've been here for 20 years. And we're seen like just emotionally like crying, just like just in disbelief that they had finally gotten over the hump and, you know, the demons had been exercised and they finally won around and, um it, it really was just a, a really special moment for the team and then for the city and the fan base like dude i saw your video you you posted your video online like can we show it here on the pod for those who missed it like the dave i don't know were you recording the whole time or what like what happened there so as you know uh, as uh mike knows a good buddy my jose was over watch the game 
like you know we didn't watch game five together we watched game three together and so we're like we gotta get we gotta get the band back together we gotta watch game six together so he came over watching the whole game and when the third period ends and he's just like dude i don't know if this is gonna jinx it but we gotta record ourselves in overtime and i'm like okay i'll set up my laptop we'll set up a record we'll do it just got to pray and hope that they pull this off because I don't want to have to look back on my reaction if they don't pull this off. And yeah. It it worked out. <laughs> Let's just did say. You, did you have the same feel? We'll play it in a second because I know you got the clip and I, I want to play it. Did you have the same reaction to me? And let me know. Anyone in the chat, Um, you know, let me know in the comment section down below. But going into the overtime period, like I physically felt ill, like like as if it was game seven and the season was on the line. I know it was only game six and there's another game, you know, they'll live to fight another day. But it truly felt like a game seven overtime. Like that wasn't just me, right? Like you felt the same thing. So if you're going to look in the video externally, I don't look too bad. Like I'm, I look like I'm keeping calm, but internally, like I'm just, I'm a wreck. Like it, it, it was just... <laughs> Like it's to go through that again and to know, and you think back to last year, you brought up the game six from last year. Like, Same thing, right? Let the third period lead slip, go to overtime. And that time it was the lightning who got the right bounce and brought it to yeah. seven. Right. And so like, I'm remembering all that. I'm thinking, Oh, if they get this done, it's going to look, it's going to feel so good. Cause the other games, the other series is going to seven games. So you get a little bit of time off. I said like, like just like get it done. And I was so like laser focused watching this fixated on everything happening, where the puck was going, who was doing what, who was going where. If you try talking to me, that was not, I was not like, I even said in the discord, like I'm most like I think from the third period on I'm like yeah I don't expect uh, much from me from this point on watching the rest of this game here because that's how laser focused I was. Yeah, yeah. I I think everybody was in the same boat where it just it felt like a game seven like that that yeah. was they had to win it because game sevens never go Toronto's way. You do you just don't want to have a game be left up to to that right when a true do or die situation. And uh, but they didn't have to, man. They got it done. John Tavares scores the game winner. Oh, captain, my captain. Uh, and it's the big boys who got it done. Ultimately, it was the big boys who were out on the ice who, you know, made it happen. Right. Matthews gets the first goal of the game with a, an absolute beastly shift to to finally end it with a goal where he kind of called his shot too. And then for the captain to come through with uh, with the overtime winner to send his team through his childhood team. Right. Um, you know, like that, that, that pajama boy picture was taken, you know, closer to the time where the Maple Leafs had, were actually winning rounds in the playoffs. Right. So it, it really, really is, uh, something, something that, that, you know, the Leafs were actually able to do it. And, and he was the one, the captain mm -hmm. who was able to actually put the team on his back and send him through and get the monkey off the back. But Dave, I can't let you get away with the buds. We do have to play okay. the video your reaction in real time live to seeing the game winning goal. Let's watch it. Tavares keeps it going and it's got Tavares behind the net. Oh my god! They did it! Yes! They freaking did it! Yes! 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 <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, I did it! Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Oh shit! Oh my god! Disbelief, man. It was just pure disbelief from everyone because I think a lot of people had the same reaction. It's like, they actually did it. They actually won the game and put them away in overtime and advanced to the second round. They won a round. They actually did it. Like I, I had very a very similar situation. Me and my roommate were watching it in our in our condo, 
and we would you know it went in and we didn't even know how to react to each other we first went for a high five and it turned into a little bro hug somebody out you and jose did it it was just like oh. oh my god they actually and same thing it's like holy crap they actually did it they just it was it was slight disbelief but uh they did it man it happened leaves are through the next route so first and foremost, that is not press box worthy material. No, <laughs> that does not happen uh, in the press box. Yeah, that that would not be okay unless you're a player. Unless, unless you're, you're a player. player. Do we or, have that video by the way? Of the I player? have that video too. Okay, let's play this because if you guys missed it, this was video of the players in the press box: Zach Aston Reese and Justin Hall and Wayne Simmons, like the players all and their reaction to uh, to the game winning goal. Here's that now. Oh, just Wayne Simmons, man. You, you just love to see that guy, the emotion. I know he hasn't, you know, he didn't play at all through the series, but he's been here a couple of years. He's a Toronto guy. You know, he knows, knows the levity of the situation here in Toronto. And just to be part of the team, probably for him, that that was able to finally exercise the demons. You could tell right there that that, that meant a lot to even the guys who weren't on the ice, but who've been there through the grind of the season. Zach Aston Reese, who found his way out of the lineup in this final game, which we'll get to. We'll break down the game in just a moment. We're just kind of talking about, you know, how we felt when it actually happened. Um, so stay tuned because we're going to break down the game a little bit. We're also going to give out some awards throughout the series. But, like, it was just awesome. Like, I watched compilations and cut-ups of, of all of the celebrations that was going on, and, and that was another one that I saw, which was just awesome to see. Really, really was, man. Just, again, goes to show how important and how pressure-packed this season was for everyone. And, uh, you know, the amount of, of stress, I'm sure, that this alleviates from a lot of people is going to be amazing. And, and I could see them coming out in the second round and just playing a lot lighter. Like, they finally won a round. Like, that's not hanging over them anymore. And we know who they're playing now. It's the Florida Panthers, not the Boston Bruins. The Florida Panthers. Now, can't take them lightly, right? Cannot take them lightly because we just saw they beat a pretty darn good team in Boston. But it's seemingly a better path and seemingly a better matchup for the Maple Leafs. It was mental exhaustion. That was like the, my reaction and even like you see some of the players' reactions. That is just mental exhaustion that you like just letting it all out. Right. And and anybody that was making the jokes about Leafs fans celebrating as if they won the cup. That was in a lot of ways a Stanley Cup win for this fan base. Because oh, let's not go that far here. You're opening us up for jokes now. Come but, on. <laughs> but just but the, the other thing is you see the reactions from a series win. Imagine if it goes that much farther. You know what I would equate that to? Because I was having this conversation with a buddy at work, and I think what I would equate it to was, you know, if you're a Toronto native, you'll understand this. Winning that that game, winning that series, winning that round, not necessarily like winning a championship. Like that wasn't – like I was downtown. I, I went and I perused King West, and I was down there in the bar scene, seeing what was going on, the parties that were happening. And trust me, there was a lot going on. I didn't go down to the square because I knew that would just be a completely different animal. But mm -hmm. there was some stuff and some shenanigans happening down there, which I love, by the way. Um, I equated to like booking your ticket to a Stanley Cup final. It wasn't quite winning the cup, but it's as if, you know, the way that I think Toronto partied when they booked their ticket to the NBA finals when the Raptors did it back in 2019. I think that's about the level of, of, you know, excitement that came through the city was as if they had booked their ticket to the, the final, not quite the championship. They didn't, yeah. that wasn't a Stanley cup celebration, but it was a little bit more than, than winning one round. It, it did have definitely a lot more specialty to it. And you could tell, I mean, 
it's the people down there were amazing. You know, some fans of the show came up to me, even they're like, oh, I can't wait to listen to Locked On Leafs on Monday. It's going to be awesome. You and Dave, I'm so happy for the team, happy for you guys. So shout out to those who, you know, said hello and whatnot. But, um, yeah, it's uh, it's crazy. They did it, though. They actually did the thing. Uh, let's break Let's break down the game, though. Because it was mm-hmm. it was a good game. It was probably the most even game that we had throughout the whole series, which is you know funny. Every game had its own little story and its own little chapter for the series, and this one was probably as as close to it gets as an even Steven even killed hockey game. So we'll kind of get into it, break it down, and uh, we'll hand out some uh, some hardware, some locked on Leafs awards for the series as well, and we'll look ahead a little bit because we can actually reset for round two. Because we know it's going to be the Florida Panthers. Uh, we'll do more of a preview on tomorrow's show. But we can talk a little bit about how Florida was able to get through Boston. Because um, I watched that game tonight. And boy, was it a wild one as well. Uh, but before we get into all that, Dave, a word from our show sponsor. Yes, today's episode is brought to you by a product I use every day. AG1 by Athletic Greens. Maybe you're like me, you want to be healthy and eat well, but it's always easier said than done. That's no longer the case with AG1. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens and a glass of water each day, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, immune system, energy recovery, focus, and aging, all of those things. It can be hard and expensive. To keep track of multiple different supplements and vitamins, not to mention how hard it can be on your stomach. AG1 costs you less than three dollars a day. You're investing in your health, and it's cheaper than your cold brew habit. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your system with convenient daily nutrition to make it easier. Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free trial packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com/slash/nhl-network. Again, that is Athletic Greens. Dot com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Welcome back into the Locked On at Least podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We are your host here at Locked On Least. We want to appreciate and uh, say thank you to those who join us each and every day on the show. You're, you're the everydayers. You know who you are. And for those who are brand new to the show, hop on board because we got another round of hockey that we gotta that we get to 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 kind of talk about and comb through. So if you would uh, really appreciate if you guys could subscribe to the podcast, we got new episodes coming out each and every weekday. So hit that little subscribe button, notification bell as well, and you'll be notified when we drop brand new content. All right, Dave. Well, we talked about how much uh, it meant to us and to the fans and to the city and to the team, how great it was for them to get that win. But how did it happen? Let's break this thing down. Well, we know that John Tavares scored the game-winning goal. But overall, what were your impressions on uh, on that hockey game, Dave? Oh, it was just – it was a tight game, right? Like, they the, – neither – I mean, especially Tampa wasn't giving up much. They weren't giving an inch. The Leafs had to really push to earn every chance they got. But, you know, a lot the big boys, you know, namely Austin Matthews, were getting those chances in tight. And I have to say this. I was uncertain of how Michael Bunting would go into the lineup, how what an impact he had. And I I you've got to give him all the credit because I think he had the freshest legs out of anybody on this Leafs team looked like the guy was off for three games yeah. and he he just brought it he just brought a different element to that game with his insertion into the lineup not just him though like i, I mean they won 11 and 7 for the first time all series and three guys came out not just they, they decided zach Aston reese and sam lafferty you're out michael bunting you're in justin hall you're out and in goes timothy lilligren and Eric Gustafson. So they had three guys who were inserted into the lineup for the for the first time. Well, two guys, I guess, for the first time that Michael Bunting you missed since game one. So they had the fresh legs going. And, you know, you could tell, like, I thought Lilligren and, and Gustafson looked pretty good uh, when they were out there. Like, Lilligren was winning some board battles. He had that one good shot on net, a good opportunity. You know, I thought Bunting had himself a couple of really good looks, rang one off the bar. 
Um, you know, he was uh, certainly looked like a player who was, you know, shot out of a cannon and, um, you know, really kept everything between the whistles too, which is exactly what he needed to do. Right. Don't let, don't be a distraction to your club. Don't let them get in your head. And I didn't think they, they did a good, I, I don't know. It, it seemed like Tampa wasn't trying to, I thought that they would be a little bit more, you know, annoying to Michael Bunting. Maybe they were, it just wasn't caught on camera perhaps, or there was just, you know, some stuff that was said, but I thought he did a good job of st staying level headed and not letting it impact the game itself. So, um, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to Michael Bunting coming in and, and playing that well. But to your point, this was a game where the big boy showed up, you know, like that, that first goal, the shift by Austin Matthews oh. was beast mode, right? Like that's the stuff of that, you know, legends are made of, right? When you make a play like that, all, all the way to the, the to the point where, you know, he calls his shot. Like literally, I don't know if, if you see the replay, they showed it. Literally with a stick, he's like, bro, it's going to be right here. Like put, put the puck right here. I'm ready for it. Calls his shot. And then gets it on goal and uh, it ends up scoring scoring the goal. Um, all around a really solid game from the big boys, but I think you got to really tip your cap to to Ilya Samsonov, who outdueled Andre Vasilevsky for the third time at Amelie Arena. Dude, they went into Tampa's home where they had a spectacular road uh, home record all season long, and were three and zero, three overtime victories against the Tampa Bay Lightning in their own building. The first time in history that a team has done that. Um, and, and it's mainly because of that guy right there. Ilya Samsonov was unbelievable, especially early on. Uh, and then a couple of more stops in overtime and eventually they get the bounce they needed to, uh, to advance. But man, there was, you know, a lot of the guys who get paid the big bucks showed up finally for this team and, uh, Samsonov also backstopping them, uh, along the way as well. So, you know, the guys who you, you kind of pointed to and said, they got to step up. I thought they did. Yeah. And the Morgan Riley. Riley. Oh, got to give love to Morgan Riley too. Oh yeah. Absolutely. If it wasn't for Mo taking radish, like going to the, going to the net, taking radish there. I mean, that, that bounce isn't there for, for, for Tavares, right? That's just, that's probably a very easy routine save for Vasilevsky to make. But by going there, you bring a little bit of traffic in front and you allow more bodies in front of the cage to get that fortuitous bounce. And that's Morgan Riley just being instinctive and, and going to the net. Yeah. Cause I initially saw the puck, like take a deflection on that. It didn't look like it was a Tavares shot that went or like something had to have deflected. Yeah. There was a redirect of some kind. That's why I thought maybe it was Morgan Riley that scored it. And yeah, I, but it was, it was plays like that, but it was also just, you know, Samsonov made some great saves, but Tampa didn't get those cheap second or third opportunities, right? You know, if Samson had a puck bounce away from him, there was somebody in the way, right? There, you know, a minus the Stamkos uh, goal. The Leafs did a very good job of just making sure they took a took a body in front of the net, making sure that somebody was accounted for. Like I think early in the game, like Eric Gustafson blocked blocked a shot on net that looked like it was labeled for the back of the net, and like those are the plays you need to make. You need to account for those small details because those small details can mean a can be huge in a tight game like that. Because I I did not expect that to be a one one game going into overtime. Not at all. No, 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 no. And and Luke Shen did that all series long. Like he was somebody who, oh. you know, in front of Samsonov did a really good job of tying up sticks. Like there was the one sequence where Samsonov kind of, you know, down and out and the puck was in the blue paint. And uh, I can't remember exactly which, maybe it was Kalorn, I think, potentially, Hagel maybe. But one of the Lightning players was right there on the doorstep and could have had an easy tapping goal. But Luke Shen ties up the stick and doesn't allow him to do anything. And that gave Samsonov enough time to get over and get the puck and smother it and, and you know, avoid that whole situation but again that's just you know being able to to box out guys and having the meat and potatoes type of players like you, you look at you know the biggest difference between the previous six seasons and and what we've seen in this playoff series is the Leafs actually have guys who can you know win net front battles both yeah. on both ends of the ice but more importantly 
on the defensive end of the ice. Like that was the biggest difference last year. They couldn't box out Maroon. They couldn't box out Corey Perry, Kalorn, Braden Point, who's very small, but a, a very, you know, stocky dude who doesn't get pushed off his mark very easily. But they were able to do that, whether it was Jake McCabe, Luke Shen, Morgan Riley was doing a really good job of protecting his the front of the net. Um, you know, there was a lot of guys out there this season who did a good job of doing that. And, and obviously we saw, you know, they were getting traffic in front of Vasilevsky, especially early in the series, which is something that they hadn't been able to do before. So, you know, a lot of the newcomers allowing them just bulking up, beefing up, really complimenting <laughs> the skill level of the high end players that the Maple Leafs have. And you've got this nucleus that looks like they're playing a, a playoff brand hockey, you know, and we'll see what they can do moving forward. But Hey, step one, win round one, check complete. Right. So uh, we'll see what else, uh, what else they have in store for us. Anything else you want to mention about, uh, about the game, any other sequence or anything like that, that sticks out to you? No, I I think we covered it quite well. I think you know, it's almost like I've like I've almost blanked on the game itself because I just still can't believe that it happened. Like just I, trying to like recall a lot of different things. I'm like, I just keep remembering the the win, the goal, the you know the goals, and then it's like the celebrations. Yeah. Like that's like, what keeps replaying in my head. Yeah, just like seeing John Tavares, you know, just act like a a, a beast on that shift skating circles in the Tampa zone. That's not something you see often from John Tavares, him getting on his high horse like that. It was just, he shot himself into another gear. Um, that was very impressive to, to, to see. Can we also acknowledge the hockey gods, the hockey gods? Okay. Game six last year. What do you, what do you remember most about it? I remember the phantom penalty calls that went against the Leafs. I know exactly where you're going with this. And what happened this year? Oh, gee, I don't know. Are, are you talking about some sort of uh, stick that hit a type of a lightning player who decided to fling his head back and hoping to get a call and didn't get the call? Didn't get the call. Should have been a penalty. Hey, I'm here saying it, right? As, yeah. a, as an observer of the game, that 100% is a penalty. TJ Brody, his stick got him up in the head. That should have been a penalty. But guess what? That's the hockey god saying, hey, you flung your head back earlier in that game, by the way, with the Luke Shen penalty. Also was not a, a high stick. The, pretty sure he didn't even get him in the face. It was another one that was kind of on the shoulder. And a year ago, a year ago in game six, another stick hits you in the shoulder and you fling your head back trying to win yourself an Oscar. You don't mm -hmm. think that people remember? You don't think that the hockey gods remember that? So, eh, it's hard to, you know complain if you're it's hard to have any sympathy about that if you're a leaf fan from lightning fans like god oh, should have been a penalty yeah well the 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 phantom high sticking call that allowed tampa to get back into it and score the game time goal in the power play in game six last year shouldn't have been a penalty so guess exactly. what payback so you know what and uh <laughs> the hockey gods everything kind of evens out in the wash eventually and it's kind of what happened there so uh yeah it, it's it's uh it still kind of rattles my cage that the maple Leafs went around and they're on to uh onto the second second series where they'll be taking on the florida panthers uh on the other side though dave let's put a little bow on this series um let's play uh or let's take a look at some well, we're handing out awards. We're going to hand out some awards here from the series. So we're going to do this after every series. Uh, I guess it's the first time we've ever been able to do it, though, because they actually have won a series. So we can hand out awards because there were some strong performances. So why don't we reward those guys? And then uh, we'll take a look at, uh, you know, Leafs uh, and, and, and Panthers a little bit more so. Talk about how the Panthers were able to stun the Bruins and advance to round two as well. So all that and more coming up on the other side. Listen to Locked On These Podcasts. Part of Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease Podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. Uh, welcome back to our everydayers. You know who you are if you're brand new to the podcast. Again, appreciate you giving us a shot. Uh, if you want daily Maple Leafs coverage, we offer it for you. So uh, hit subscribe and come back each and every day to Locked On Lease. Be part of the family. We got a Discord that just was popping off on the weekend. 
got to love it. Not only for the Maple Leafs winning, but then the Boston Bruins losing. It really was a perfect weekend for Leaf fans, if you think about it. Uh, so we talked about all that in the Discord, which we'll put the Discord, we'll link, we'll pin it. We're going to pin it on the video because we've had a few people ask for it. So we'll just pin it down below in the comment section. You can join the Lockdown Leafs Discord family as well. All right, buddy, let's put a little bow on this thing and uh, hand out some awards. So we're going to do a- an MVP. We're going to have best goal, best forward, best defenseman. And then an unsung hero, the twist is you cannot give out an award uh, or two awards to the same player. That's the twist that we're putting on this here. Okay? Okay. So that is the twist. So you got to hand them out very strategically. Okay? Okay. So let's start with best goal. What was the best goal, Dave? Well, I, I got to go with the one that I, it was the greasiest not the greatest talented goal but it got the damn thing done it let me get to watch a titanic moment i don't know if you see the video of the guy who per, whoever I, I whoever it was i put the montage together of the titanic i haven't hmm. seen the titan i was i was i was wondering where that was because i have not seen the titanic moment yet but i was looking for one Oh, I got one for you. Well, we can't play it on the po- on on the podcast because of copyright and yeah. YouTube will flag us for that. But I'll send that to you. Um, go on the Locked On Leafs Twitter account. I did retweet it on there, so you can watch it there. Perfect. So, John Tavares, thank you for giving us the Titanic moment. I am now very happy that you were my first autographed jersey that I got framed. Yeah, makes it worth it, doesn't it? Um, yeah. If uh, no, no one's complaining about the cap. No one's complaining about his cap nope. space today. Absolutely not. Should have paid him twenty million. Who cares? Um, I had the same thing. I mean, the closeout goal to do it in overtime. I, I mean, that's the best goal of the series. Was it the prettiest? Absolutely not. But it definitely was the most important goal of the series for sure. So it's gotta, it's gotta be that one. Uh, John Tavares with the the series winning goal in overtime. All right, best forward. Who's the best forward? This one's interesting. There's two options here I think we could take. Curious as to which one you're going to go with. I'm going to go with Austin Matthews. Mm. Um, I thought in game six, he wanted to win that game. Um, Him calling for his shot, as you mentioned, for the goal. So cool. Absolute bullet of a shot. Like, could not have put it in a more perfect place. And I thought he was also in game six doing more on the defensive end, right? You know, he's got the Anthony Sorelli matchup for most of the game. And that that line of Sorelli, Hagel, and Kalorn were a big problem for the Leafs in that series. And in game six, it was Austin Matthews that was tasked with shutting them down. And they, they did he did a pretty good job of it, I thought. Yeah, I thought that, uh, you know, he really, like coming off of last season where Sorelli did a really good job of shutting him down. I thought after game one, game one was a mess for everybody, but to come out in game two and to see Keith challenge Matthews and say, Hey, we have last change, but guess what? They're throwing out the Sorelli line to start the game. You're going out there to win those minutes. And he did. And they did throughout the rest of the series. He was a big, big time factor. Uh, led the series with five goals. I won on a uh, a prop bet that was out there on, uh, you know, our, our favorite sports book fan duel. He did have Austin Matthews, I think, as three to one favorites to be the highest goal scorer of the series. So shout out, was able to win that one. Um, but I, I, I also had him just because, you know, you think back to game four when they were down, down four one, and for him to put the team on his back and score two big time goals. They eventually tied and went in an overtime and then scored that goal last night, went beast mode and uh, was able to, to, you know, get the, the only goal in regulation that the Maple Leafs were able to get. Um, You know, it was fantastic. You know, the guy was blocking shots the entire series, especially last night. You know, I, I really thought he was playing phenomenal hockey throughout the entire, entire series. Um, So Austin Matthews for me also gets my, best forward award but the first like few games though like it it could have went to ryan o'reilly 
Yeah. You know, he was fantastic as well. So I think an, an honorable mention to Ryan O'Reilly would, uh, would also suffice, I think uh, for, for this award. Yeah, no, I thought Ryan O'Reilly obviously deserved, um, you know, a lot of praise for what he did. And you know what? And he, he got his, uh, his offensive weapon taken away from him and no, and, um, and Matthew Nyes when <laughs> Nyes was offensive weapon. Off the right. Dude, yeah. he was on the, he's on the ice for all three of those OT winners, eh? All three. All it's, three on the ice for all three. I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible when you think about it. 20 years old. You know, I, I almost look at it as, <laughs> so, for those who forget, I suppose, but I mean, they mentioned the broadcast a bunch, so I'm sure, you know, it's, it's hard to forget, but the kid, his final college game in the championship, the NCAA frozen four championship was in Amelie arena where they lost in overtime. Mm -hmm. Since then he's four and oh at Amelie arena with three of those wins coming in overtime with him on the ice. He was also on the ice when they lost in the national championship. That was the, to me, that was a sacrifice that Matthew Nyes had to make to the hockey gods <laughs> in order to help his next team, the Maple Leafs, have some playoff success, some OT success going forward. So thank you very much to Matthew Nyes for, uh, for your, your great sacrifice with you and the rest of your Minnesota Golden Gophers. We, we really appreciate that here at Locked on Leafs. Uh, all right. Best defenseman, Dave. You see that guy right there? Uh, see, he wears a, not 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 the Michael Gallup. We're not uh, we're gonna come <laughs> up here. Uh, you you see the guy that's wearing number forty four right there? Yeah, would that be one Morgan Riley? I, I think that is uh, Mister Morgan Riley. I thought this is what the Leafs were hoping they were going to get from Morgan Riley when they signed for that long term extension. Now, do we expect Morgan Riley to continue to produce at this offensive rate? Absolutely now. <laughs> no, I mean like he <laughs> sure do. Absolutely. Eight points per series. Book it. Guaranteed. I, I just like that he took his game to another level. Yeah. And the offense and even if it wasn't even going to be scoring goals, just being a factor offensively and then not panicking in the defensive zone, you know, when he gets hemmed in his own end. There were some shifts that he was out there for a long time. And in his own end, and he didn't panic, and he was make he wasn't making those stupid turnovers that he was making during the regular season. That was his biggest problem, really, was turnovers. And you know how many times, even on the power play, where somebody gives up the puck, and who's the first guy back, or who's the guy making the, the important back check? Like I could count on both of my hands how many times I saw Morgan Riley. He's the one hustling back there to make the plays. Yeah. And that's why he like I don't know he's he's probably I don't know any other defenseman that I think that was deserving more so than Riley for top defenseman. It, it feels like he's honestly playing the best hockey of his career right now. A thousand percent. I, I know that he's had some big seasons. Like he had a twenty goal year a few years ago, seventy two points. But the way that he's played and how impactful he's been, like look at the three goals that he scored and how impactful and timely those were. Right, the overtime winner. Mm -hmm. right and then the next game it was the tying goal to take it to overtime and then in the next game it was the first goal of the game to open up the scoring unfortunately tampa scored moments later to kill the momentum mm -hmm. but like it's just timely big goals coming out of coming out of out, out of morgan riley eight points through six games uh 100 he's been the leafs best defenseman um and we're back full disclosure Dave and I took a break in the middle of this segment because it was the final three minutes of the Seattle Colorado game as you we were recording. Unbelievable. And we had to go and watch it just to, to see if the Kraken could pull off the second upset of the day and displace the defending cup champs. Now that's both the cup champs and the cup finalists that are gone this year and the presence trophy winners, AKA the team that had the best record in hockey history and the most points in hockey history also gone. Like it's insane. These playoffs have been crazy. It's wild. What we've seen so far through, uh, through the first round of the playoffs, man, I can't wait for round two. It's going to be something, but congrats to the Kraken and the Kraken fans. Congrats. Uh, Erica Ayala is going to have herself 
a show tomorrow to imagine on Locked On Kraken. Congrats to her. Um, all right, Dave Haxtell, by the way. Congratulations, former Leafs assistant. That's right, Dave Haxtell. You're welcome, Seattle, for uh, Dave Haxtell, who left Toronto to be the head coach for the Tampa uh, or for the Seattle Kraken. So, yes, Toronto's got their little fingernails, their fingertips all over that one as well. So, you're welcome. Uh, all right, let's get back into this little exercise that we're doing to put a little bow on uh, on the Leafs and Tampa series. We've already gone through the best goal. We've done the best forward. We've done the best defenseman. Who's the unsung hero for the Maple Leafs through this first round of the playoffs, Dave? The unsung hero. I'm going to go with the uh, gentleman who was brought in after a long, long absence from the Toronto Maple Leafs franchise, brought back, I'm calling him the prodigal son, and that is Luke Shen. Prodigal son. The prodigal son has returned to fulfill the prophecy. I know that sounds corny as heck, but that's how I view it. Uh, I thought Luke Shen, what now? He didn't play. Uh, he didn't pl- go out and play like 25 minutes as a defenseman. He didn't have to. But there was a couple of things I thought he did. And you brought up, you know, how good he was and winning those net front battles. I just think the physicality that he brought. The, they needed that on the back end. But on top of that, Patrick Maroon, guys like Patrick Maroon, Corey Perry, Tanner Janot, the guy that the Tampa Bay Lightning decided was worth almost every single pick that they had, and then some, was then taken out of the lineup because he was, these guys could not do anything to intimidate the Leafs physically. And that is mainly because Luke Shen was out there patrolling the ice saying that's not going to happen on my watch. Yeah, he was phenomenal, man. Like he was so good out there. Like, like you said, he didn't play top tier minutes, but when he was out there and he was playing, he was playing them hard. That's exactly what you need to do in the playoffs. He was blocking shots. Like, listen, let me read the, the stat line that he actually had in, uh, in last night's win over the Tampa Bay lightning. It was actually incredible what he was able to do in that victory. Again, a guy who only played 17 minutes and 42 seconds, but he had two shots on goal, eight hits, two blocks, two takeaways. Like the guy was all over the place, all over it. And he was extremely calm, very calm, handling the puck in his own zone. Like there was a couple of times there where, you know, they would be kind of converging on him pretty quickly, but he would make the smart, simple decision and just get the puck to Riley, right? Whether it was off the boards, a little tape-to-tape pass, very calm and poised with the puck too, which I thought was uh, was was much needed, especially in that third period when eh, things were starting to kind of tip the scales towards Tampa. He really kind of calmed things when he was out on the ice. So uh, for sure, I think that he's a, a terrific option to be that unsung hero. I think you could also look at Jake McCabe, another guy who could potentially be referred to as an unsung hero. How many block shots did that guy have last night? And I mean, big hits as well. Through big hits. Like, yeah, massive hit on, uh, was it Hagel? Uh, there was one on Corey Perry where and Corey Perry, Perry yeah. looks like he got knocked into next week. Yeah, a couple of big hits for for Jake McCabe. Um, there's a lot of unsung heroes I think you could you could pick. Like, there were some depth guys who really showed up big. Um, Noel Chari had a couple of goals through the series. He was like led the series in hits, I'm pretty sure, too. He ended up with, I don't know, probably close to 40 or 50 hits by the end of the thing. Um, he was exceptional as well. So there, there's a lot of guys you could pick as an unsung hero. Uh, but MVP, who was the Leafs' MVP through the seven-game series in which they finally won, six-game series, sorry, in which they finally won and are on to round two? Who is the MVP, Dave? It's a tough one, but, I mean, they don't win this series if Ilya Samsonov does not outduel Andre Vasilevsky in that game six. But in a lot of the games that they won, you don't win three overtime games in a series on the road if your goaltender doesn't make timely saves. And this is something the Leafs have not gotten in a very, very long time. And I have no issues with Ilya Samsonov, like if anybody, nobody can say that this guy can't perform in the playoffs. 
He just Five proved more. it in this series. Nope. Uh, all of them had a lot to prove, right, about whether or not they can compete when a time comes for the playoffs. Marner, Matthews, Tavares, Nylander, Samsonov, Riley, because none of them had won. None of them had won here in Toronto. And uh, Samsonov didn't win when he was with Washington. Mm-hmm. They've all won around now. They've all won around now. Uh, I'm with you, man. Like, you could even look at it, right? Six games. I would say game six was pretty even. Um, so we'll say it was even. But four of the first five games, Toronto was severely outplayed, I would say. Like, they were outplayed. And mm-hmm. it took a couple of miraculous comebacks for them to to win those games, right? In game three and four in Tampa. So, I mean, when you look at it, four of the six games, they were outplayed. Well, the reason why they won four of the six games is because Ilya Samsonov came up big, huge. I thought game three, I want to say it was, he stole that one, the first game in Tampa. He stole it. You know, Tampa had a chance to uh, to, to extend the lead multiple times. He denied him. Eventually, they tie it and win it in overtime. And then last night, man, he was phenomenal there too. Allowed one goal on, was it 32, 33 shots? A couple of real solid, solid looks that they had throughout the entire game. Um, but Samsonov made some big time saves and uh, 100%. Like, that's the backbone, man. MVP. Would not have won that series if it wasn't for the strong goaltending of Ilya Samsonov throughout, for sure. He he outperformed his fellow countryman, Andre Vasilevsky, flat out, outperformed him. A Two guys who went first were drafted first round by their teams mm-hmm. were both expected to be backbones of their teams. Vasilevsky eventually got there. Samsonov had to go to Toronto to realize that for himself. It's... It's a great story. I think, you know, the, the Leafs, when you look at all the runs that have been on throughout their history, if you think back, now I've been reminiscing back to those days of when the Leafs were winning playoff series. And you look at the guys in that, Ed Belfour, Cujo, Curtis Joseph, Felix Potvin, legends in the crease for the Leafs. In like, I'm bringing the recent memory. I'm not going to go back, all the way back. You know, Turk Broda. You know, Turk Broda, Johnny Bauer, Terry Sawchuk. I'm not going to go back that far. Right. But when you look at recent memory, the goaltending performances were huge for Toronto. And I and that that was very much true for uh, for Samsonov in this uh, in this series. Yeah, he was awesome, man. He really, really was. And it's going to be just as good in round two and round three and round four, because as most of them said, post game is it only gets harder from here. And it's true. Right. Winning one round isn't necessarily the goal. It's always been the first step in the main goal and one that they have not been able to get get through. Well, they finally got through it, and who knows where they could go now. What we do know is who they're going to be playing, the Florida Panthers, who somehow, some way, beat the Boston Bruins in a seven-game series, a brilliant overtime finish. They scored the final minute to tie things up and bring it to OT, and then Carter Verhage, former Niagara Ice Dog, former Toronto Maple Leaf, I might add, uh, did end up finishing it in OT and displaced the Boston Bruins, who were the greatest team ever assembled, according to the stat books and all the record books, most wins, most points of any team ever in uh, in hockey. But didn't matter because they didn't win four games in a best of seven in April. Only won three. And unfortunately or fortunately for, you know, most people who probably are listening to this show, it's the Florida Panthers going through. And, uh, man, crazy. We now know that Florida and the Kraken both upsetting Boston and Colorado. Craziness. Crazy. Absolutely bonkers. And I think round two is going to have – I mean, we still don't know what's going to go on with the Devils and the Rangers. That's the last series to figure that out. Mm -hmm. Man, round two has the potential – for some absolutely banger, banger matchups. Yeah, yeah. As the kids would say these days. Edmonton, Vegas, that'll be a really good oh, matchup. Series that's going to be. Um, I mean, Crack and Dallas, I guess. That's like, going to be an interesting one. It could be a goaltending duel between Grubauer and Ottinger now. Imagine Grubauer goaltending duel. Do like that's what we're talking about here. But um, yeah, it's it's been a really good first round and. 
Um, haven't been able to say that over the course of the last, you know, 20 years uh, as a Maple Leafs fan. So it's nice that they've been uh, nice enough to to get the monkey off the back, exercise their demons, whatever phrase you want to use. They're through to the next round, buddy. And you and I can continue to watch Maple Leafs hockey and break it all down right here for all y'all because that's what we're going to be doing Monday through Friday each and every day through the rest of the season, pal. Win or lose, we're going to be here Monday through Friday through the rest of the season. But I would prefer to be talking about the Maple Leafs and their successful run uh, as opposed to, you know, what might happen if they don't do any of those things. But we will return tomorrow. We'll start to tee up the series. We can actually sit here and reset for round two of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Leafs, Panthers, it should be a doozy. All right, that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank y'all for supporting and uh, listening to the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On These podcast on all podcasting platforms. We receive daily Leafs content. We're also up on YouTube as well. Um, follow us on uh, Twitter. I'm at Mickey underscore Canuck. Dave is at D underscore Morissuti. You can also follow the show at Locked On Leafs. We're back with another episode tomorrow. We're going to preview the series between the Leafs and the Panthers. But it starts next- on Tuesday, by the way. For Ooh, has that been announced officially? Yeah, it's been announced. Game one is on Tuesday in Toronto, and game two- game one's in Toronto on Tuesday. Game two, Thursday in Toronto. No time determined just yet. Okay, so no time determined, but we know that it's going to be in Toronto Tuesday and Thursday. Yes, sir. And then it'll go to Florida for uh, so home ice, right? Home ice for not- round two as well. Now that uh, you know they're not playing Boston, so that's another plus, another home ice. Except they did pretty well on the road. <laughs> they went three and zero, three and zero on the road against the Tampa Bay Lightning. But uh, yeah, y'all, y'all love it, man. You will always love to take that and see that the Maple Leafs with home ice advantage in uh, in another series. All right, we're back with another episode for you guys tomorrow to preview it. Until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.